You don't talk about Zen. You talk with Zen. You don't write about Zen. You write with Zen. There is nothing to be said about Zen. It's like trying to say something about sex to a three-year-old. A three-year-old doesn't have the slightest idea of what you're saying when you tell him that a sexual orgasm is sort of a little death. The same thing is true of trying to describe moments of so-called Zen when you are completely there. When you see all of creation in a tree bough weighed down with snow, or you hear a yes in that very moment when the snow gets too heavy and all of it decides to drop, kerplop, on the ground. One flake in a million made the difference to all of the rest, and they mutually decided to fall. You can ponder the various avenues into the experience, but as long as the pondering is going on, the experience is blocked. Words are trying to be things, events, after the fact. Words can recall the moment, but if you haven't had an experience, the words mean nothing. provide such delicious moments. At 5 a.m., you joyfully sit by the window where outside is a bush, a bush filled with sparrows. It is alive with little monks in their brown and black robes jabbering about their plans for the day. These birds, their chatter, breathe every breath with you. It is a complete experience that happens in glimpses because as you sit there, you vacillate between really hearing and breathing it all in and thinking about how amazing it all is. With practice, you will leave the thinking about it behind and just be with it. It sounds easy, it should be, but it isn't. This zenning is tricky but only because old habits are hard to break. And all we think we are is pure habit. To be habitless and just be there takes a lot of practice and is never fully accomplished. The most one can say about Zen is simply to encourage oneself to practice. Use words to point the way, but as they say, the finger that points is not the moon. Kerplop.